The Gorilla Girls are a group of artists and art professionals who for the last 25 years have been protesting discrimination in the art world against women and artists of color. We also have expanded our work to deal with images of women and people of color and discrimination in the world of popular culture, politics, and also Hollywood. Well, in 1984, the Museum of Modern Art reopened after a renovation with an exhibition that was entitled An International Survey of Painting and Sculpture. And out of uh, close to 200 artists, fewer than 17 were women, and there were almost no artists of color. Uh, and it was a little annoying because the curator of the show said in the press, this was Kingston McShine, that anyone who was not an included in his show should rethink his career. And just his use of that pronoun, rethink his career, struck us. And we just pushed away at that. It's a, you know, a democratic society, and art should be about the culture, all of us. It should be about art production. Well, we were artists. We are artists, so we started out in the art world. But very quickly, what we did was invent this way of using facts and humor to twist an issue around and present it in a different way that might change people's minds. So we have spread out to politics, film, more and more billionaire collectors and billionaire art dealers, a few of them control the art world. They sit on the boards of museums and they have to pay for what the museums want to collect and they're much more likely to give money for art that they already have and most of them have the same cookie cutter collections of art that costs the most. There's so many great artists out there. There's too much discrimination. Well, I mean, every decision, uh, aesthetic decision, has a value behind it. And if all the decisions are being made by the same people, then, you know, the art will never look like the whole of our culture. And right now, the art world is kind of run by, you know, billionaire art collectors who buy art that appeal to their values. And we say art should look like the rest of our culture, you know, unless all the voices of our culture are in the history of art. It's not really a history of art, it's a history of power. First we were Getty as, you know, Freedom Fighters guerrillas, and then we got some press requests and we wanted to have our pictures, but we wanted to, we were anonymous, we wanted to hide ourselves, so um, one of our early members was a really bad speller, and we were sitting at a meeting one day, and she spelled Getty a gorilla, and it was like, wow. What's very good about our image is that when you look at our masks, you think of what we stand for, and we stand for the conscience of the art world, and we feel that there, there is underrepresentation of women and minorities. And when you see our logo, basically, when you see our face, that's what we stand for, and it's not personal. People have tried to find out who we are, but this whole anonymity thing is so delicious and it's really, it's weird in one way because you don't know who we are, but it attracts attention to our cause. So while people do try to find out, they're almost always wrong.